Hey everybody, Jace Allen here from the Guitar Dungeon. And on this multi-part episode, we are going to show you how to use Vetric Aspire to create a CNC machine file to cut out a Stratocaster guitar. Stick around. <laughs> So, you've always wanted to build your own guitar, but you know, it's hard. Not that hard, but it can be hard. You know, you gotta have a bandsaw. That's kind of essential equipment. You gotta have some tools, you gotta have some know-how, you gotta have some skills. Well, one thing that is making guitar building for the uh, sort of home enthusiast these days is a CNC machine. And I happen to have a CNC long mill 30 x 30 CNC machine that I bought specifically for making guitar bodies. Be right back. All right. And this is one of those bodies. It's not completely sanded smooth yet. I just put it together to make sure everything was working. This is a solid, actually this might be a multi-part, yeah this is a two-piece piece of white ash and uh, it is like a boat anchor. This thing is so heavy. Uh, you can use whatever wood you'd like and uh, I would recommend swamp ash which is kind of a generic term for ash trees that have grown in extreme, like, like a swamp, extremely wet conditions and it makes the wood almost more porous and so it's lighter it's less dense than uh the white ash that you see here which is in i don't know like upland areas warmer maybe not necessarily warmer but drier uh conditions and so it grows more dense the rings are closer together and it weighs a ton so you could use ash you could use mahogany you can use pine you can use old barn boards whatever you can find so you can get your inch and three quarter thickness and uh, usually you're going to want like a 20 to 22 inch by maybe 14 to 16 inch wide uh, blank and we're going to show you how to take that blank and we're going to use the computer to uh, create our CNC file and we're going to set our tool paths we're going to show you everything so that you can generate the stratocaster style body and then maybe we'll go into uh, other body types we're even going to show you how to uh, route out the arm contour and the belly contour so we're going to do a two-sided uh, routing program and uh, what you'll have at the end is a finished guitar body uh, that requires minimal the only thing you'll have to do is your your round over uh, contour around the outside your radius on the outside so that you could do by hand you could also program that too uh, I haven't gotten that far with it yet but uh, maybe that will be another episode somewhere down the line so stick around and we're going to show you how to make this happen this is a multi-part episode so be sure to follow the uh, the directions in the description it shows you the links to the uh, the various parts of this uh, sort of episode thank you and here we go okay let's get started First thing we're going to need to do is find some files. So we want to search Stratocaster plans free. And the first thing that should come up is electricherald.com Fender Stratocaster guitar templates. And you're going to want PDF format. And you're going to want to download this one, Stratocaster 62 Body Front Profile. 
basically a schematic with all the dimensions. Uh, this is a really good one if you're going to make your guitar by hand. It's got all the dimensions on it, all the radiuses, everything you need to uh, transfer it onto uh, a template. Uh, it also has the uh, uh, depths of all your cuts, your route routings. Uh, so that's going to be important. Uh, we're going to alter some of the depths because this is uh, vintage style uh, specs and uh, we're going to update it a little bit just to make things a little easier on us. And then we want to download this one here, Stratocaster Body Front. See that there? And then you're going to want to download Stratocaster Body Back this one here and you can do the neck too but that'll be another episode so you definitely want to get these two here okay and then when you're done with that download it to your computer so you can find it and then go into Aspire and we're going to create a new file and under job setup, this is where you put the dimensions of your blank. Uh, we're going to do double sided, so you want to make sure you collect, uh, select double sided. Uh, thickness is uh, one and three quarters. Uh, your height and width may vary. Um, I'm dealing with, I think, a 16 by 20 blank. Might be 14, I'm not sure. Uh, so put in whatever you want there. Um, datum position is where your tool, your, your router bit starts on your uh, blank when you're actually cutting. And so you want to set that. I usually do lower left. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if your blank isn't even, you know, isn't square, uh, you might want to choose center instead and then mark the center of your blank and start your tool there. But my blanks are perfectly square, perfect, you know, perfect dimensions, and I know what they are, so I'm going to start mine lower left. And then uh, flip direction between sides, you want to make it horizontal. It's this one here on the left. That's very important because we're going to put guide holes in for pegs, pins, that go down into the work surface of the router table so that when you flip to the other side they're like registration marks so that everything is even and when you do a two-sided everything lines up the way it's supposed to so hit OK there's your work surface we want to do file import import vectors and then you want to go to the strat body front PDF that we downloaded from Electric Herald. And there it is. And then you want to center it. Uh, it drops in selected. Uh, if it's not centered, you can go up here to Transform Objects, Align Selected Objects, and then Align to Material, and select this middle one here, which will align it both top to bottom, left to right. See, there you go. Okay, so we are centered both ways. Uh, you can also use guidelines. See here, if you pull down from the uh, uh, measuring tool, I guess you could call it, up here, and it brings it down a guideline. So if you want to set your center right now, it's good to know where the center is of your... Uh, plan and so that's what this little circle is here because we're going to delete all this extra stuff in here that we don't need okay so then the next thing we want to do is create layers we're going to work in layers and uh, I believe the layer we're in right now is this one yep we can probably get rid of layer one okay and we'll turn this one into body outline. Okay, and we'll color that to, let's try orange. As you can see, everything turns to orange, so everything's on that layer. 
but we're going to move things to other layers as we go. Uh, you don't need the text. We'll get rid of that. You don't need things like this. This is a drill hole for the uh, strap button. We'll get rid of that. These are uh, the arm contour, I don't know, guides or shapes or whatever. We're going to get rid of those because we're going to do that as a 3D. Uh, you can get rid of the center line and the center circle. Okay, we'll get rid of that. And you can get rid of these little doodads. Anything that's not going to cut, we want to get rid of. Okay, so first thing I guess we can do is the... We can get rid of these. And we can get rid of these radiuses. Okay. Okay. And this line we don't need. And these we don't need. Okay. And this is a drill hole too. That's a horizontal drill hole. We can get rid of that. So here's your... Uh, yeah, and these things here. Okay, so this is your control route, or cutout. Um, so we will call that our pocket. Let's use let's use pocket. That we'll use that throughout. So new layer, uh, control pocket, and we'll make that uh, green. And then we click on this, right click, and then down here. Hopefully you can see it, because my picture is probably in the way. And you want to move to layer, control pocket. And then when you click off of it, see it turns the color of that we assigned the layer. So now it's green, so that's good. Okay, so now we'll move on to the jack pocket. Get rid of these extra things. All we want is things that are going to cut. So uh, one thing I found about the jack pocket on the vintage uh, specs is that the jacks, at least some of the jacks that I've had, fit really tight. So uh, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Not doesn't have to be too, too much bigger. I mean, you obviously want your jack to fit in it. But it helps to make it just a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, because it's the... The blades, there's like these blades that uh, come out of the jack uh, that, that hit the, the pin. And some of them are longer in, in certain jacks. And material, you're going to find that hardware is really inconsistent uh, depending on where you get it from. So it helps to make that just a little bit bigger. And since this is kind of a standalone thing, it's just a you know chrome plate. Uh, piece that fits in there, you know, you can, you know, you don't have to worry about it, you know, things not lining up, whereas this stuff here has to all line up, but this thing's kind of off by itself, so you're good if you just re resize it and then don't mess with its position. And so we'll, uh, new layer, jack pocket. And then we will call, or uh, make this pink, or magenta, and then we will click on the jack pocket, right click, move to layer, jack pocket, and there you go. Okay, so now we're going to clean up. Uh, I don't do my screw holes in uh, with the CNC machine. I do those manually later. And the reason I do that is not all hardware will fit. Even if it says it's to spec or it's, you know, whatever, uh, it doesn't always fit. The holes don't always line up, so I would I would save these holes uh, to do manually. Same with the uh, uh, neck pocket holes. We'll do those manually too. So we get rid of all this stuff, and then this is a little throwback from from the uh, vintage style uh, body. The uh, these are the pickup pockets, and oh, there's a little piece there. I'll get rid of pickup pockets, and uh, they're pretty shallow on on according to this vintage spec. 
and they're designed for the El Nico pickups that don't have the magnet sticking down and they don't have very long uh, poles, the, the screw, uh, uh, yeah, the screws on the other end that, that attach it to the, to the pit guard. So what I ended up doing is making this whole pocket deeper to accommodate, like if you have magnetic uh, pickups or whatever, and so you don't end up needing this little wire. This is like a wire cutout is what they did was because the, everything was so tight, they needed a little bit of space for the wiring to come out and go into the control pocket. And so there was this little uh, groove cut into, uh, into that area. Uh, I'm not going to use it. If you want to use it, go ahead. You can do everything to spec however you want to do it. I'm just showing you how I'm doing things uh, and what I've found to be the easiest and the more kind of universal as far as when you buy hardware because, you know, we all buy hardware from different places. Some of it's real cheap imported stuff. Some of it's, you know, Fender spec or whatever, but uh, everything just kind of, yeah, for some reason, fits a little differently. So I'm going to go through, get rid of all this stuff. And then this here is broken up into, see how it's broken up. So you want to hold shift, you want to select, click, select, hold shift, click, 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 click. And you can drag too if you want, you can drag. And actually, uh, this, I mean, if you've used this program a lot, you kind of know it. If you drag, from right to left, anything you touch will be selected. And then, oops, uh, unselect. Let me do that. And then if you drag from left to right, uh, in order for the things to be selected, you have to completely encompass them with the the bounding box. So you could actually, you could actually, like if you only wanted these things here, because those are separate. See, now watch. It only p picks up those. Whereas if you drag this way, see, it picks up everything. Everything that the bounding box touches. But anyway, you want to select all those pieces. And then you want to come over here to Edit Objects and Join. And that'll join everything together. And I don't mess with any of this stuff. Just click join again. Close. Now you have a joined shape. And then this part is still open down here. And so we want to go to edit object, node editing. And we want to click here and just drag it into this pocket a little ways. Same with here. Drag it inside the pocket a little bit. And then we want to click that uh, node. Hold shift. Click that node. So they're both selected. And then you want to come over here to edit object, join. Boom. There you go. It closes that shape. So. And then we'll create a layer pickup pocket and we will make that oh, about blue and then click on it right click move to layer pickup pocket there it is okay so we're almost done now we just have to do the neck pocket and that is also in two pieces so we want to Click, shift, click, whatever, however you want to do it. Come over here to join, join, hit join again, close. Okay, that's joined. Uh, if you got all this stuff hanging out over here, uh, we don't need that. So click on the whole thing. Come over here to uh, node editing mode. Shows your points. And then you right click where you want to add a point and then insert point, same down here. 
insert a point. Okay. Then you can select these points and then just actually you gotta right click to delete. And then select that point, right click, delete. Okay. That's better. It's a little shorter. You don't have all that you don't want your tool pad your tools to go way out there. That's it just doesn't serve a purpose. So so we're gonna click here. Uh, okay, we got both. I think both these are selected. And then we're going to do join to close it. So there you go. So that's a closed object. And then we'll come over here to add layer. Neck pocket. And we'll make that uh, yellow. And then we will click on it, right click, move to layer, neck pocket. And there you go. Okay, and then as you can see, this part of the body outline is not complete. It's not joined. So let's come up here to the layers. And we'll turn off, which I think you can just show this if you click here, show only this there you go see it's broken so we want to take our edit objects node editing tool again click there come over here shift click that uh, join close boom there you go and then we can come back up here and click this and show all. There you go. So there you go. There's all the parts. And then there's one more thing that we have to do to complete the pockets on the top. And so now we need to go back to, and we we'll probably save. I haven't saved in a while. Actually, I've already got a file started. I'll just turn it strat. Yes, you can name it whenever you want. Okay. It's always good to save because I've had problems where things will crash or whatever and then you lose all your work. Okay, so we'll go back to import, import vectors, and we are going to look for strat body back, which is what you also downloaded from Electric Herald, and open and it drops it in, but we want to move it. So let's go over here, transform objects, move. Grab it, see how the tool changes? See that, boom, changes. Well, when it changes like that, you can grab it and move it. So just move it off the work area, just to get it out of the way. And because we only need certain parts of it, so we're gonna get rid of this. Oops, oh, I moved my I moved my, <laughs> my, my guideline. I think that's where it was. And let's see, we'll get rid of these. I don't know what those are. That, the lettering, this stuff, that, these, and then that, and then you have to do something specific here. What you want to do is come here to interactive trim and then cut that close. And then you're left with the smaller of the two oblong pockets. And it is not a closed shape. If you click on it, oh it is a closed shape. Okay. Make a liar out of me. And then you can turn this where it says import strap body. That's the layer that was created when you imported this back portion so you can I'll make it plum and then rename it uh, trim top pocket okay and then you you kept your outline and then you notice this is flopped it's a mirror image so we'll click on it We'll come over here to transform objects, mirror, 
selected objects. Uh, flip horizontal, flip vertical, doesn't really matter. Flip horizontal is good. And then close. And then it's flipped, but it's the it's backwards. So I gotta rotate it. Rotate selected. We'll do 180 degrees. Close. Okay. So now grab the whole thing. Come over here to move. And then make sure you're see how that changes. And then drag it over. And then you want to zoom in and make sure that that thing is right over top of that other layer or other outline, body outline. And you can move it with your arrow keys to zoom in as far as you can just to get the accuracy there. See how that's okay. So that's pretty good. And then if you come up here to the trim pocket and you click this here like we did before and show only this, it'll show only that. You don't need the outline now because we've already got one. So you can delete that. And then we go back here, show all, and there we go. So we are we're set for the top. So now we'll save. You want to come here, toggle top bottom. Now you're at the uh, bottom. You can see a ghost of the, see the ghost of the outlines for the top. And then you're going to go back into import vectors, back into strat body back. Hit open. And there it is again. And we're going to want to rotate it. 180. And again, get rid of all this garbage. We don't need, whoops. And we don't need, oops, don't need the center line. We don't need this stuff. Whoa. We won't need that, that little line, because we already did that on the top. Okay, keep the big one. Keep this one. That's for your, uh, the springs in your claw. And then this can go, and then these doodads can go. Okay. Now select the whoop. Select the whole thing. Go to move. Drag it till you're pretty close to being lined up. And then I'm gonna zoom in here and line it up with the top cutout, that small cutout, because those have to line up. If you know about how the strats work, you know the uh, Tremola bridge fits through that hole in the top, comes down, it's a little wider in the bottom to accommodate for the swing of the of the block, and then this route uh, cutout pocket is for the springs, and then the tr uh, tr trim claw is right there. And again, we don't need, there's two different ways you can do the outline you can cut halfway through your blank and then when you flip it it'll cut the rest and then you use you know you keep this line and then cut the rest of the way through that works if you have you know short bits um, my machine sometimes it'll the collet will hit the, the wood if you don't have your bit down far enough there's all kinds of things that kind of contribute to whether you want to cut it in halves or whether you want to cut it uh, all at once from the top. I'm going to cut it all at once from the top. So I don't need this one here. And the reason I do that is in case things don't line up completely, when you do your outline in halves, you might end up with a little, a little edge, a little shelf where things may have shifted. And then you got to sand that out or router, router it out. Um, so this is much easier. So then really all you have to worry about lining up is this one piece. And if it's off a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Whereas it's more noticeable if your top and bottom outlines aren't lining up. And did that go away? No, it didn't. I thought I deleted it. There we go. 
Okay, so now let's do two more, uh, two more layers. We'll call, we'll call this uh, trim bottom pocket. And we'll do that in pink. Yeah. And then we want this part. I'll we'll actually move that now because it'll be easier to see. So we're going to do, uh, we'll call it spring pocket, spring claw, spring claw pocket. And that can be, how about just red? And then we'll move this to layer spring claw. And now you can see them. They're different colors so we're gonna this one's an open shape down hit through here so we're gonna want to close it up so go back to edit objects node editing mode grab this kind of drag it just a little bit into here same with this you want to clear your tool otherwise you'll have a little bit of a radius there come on now there we go and then shift hold select that uh, and over here to join, and there you go. You've got a join shape, and we're good. So that's the bottom. And we'll flip it. That's the top, and you can see the shadow. Okay, save. So there you go. There's your first part one, which is designing the, the file. Creating the file, designing the layout, whatever you want to call it. So this is all good to go. All the dimensions are there. And then the next episode will be, my furnace just kicked on, the next episode will be creating your tool paths. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. Well, actually, I got, we got one more thing to do. We gotta add our, our uh, drill hole for the peg. There's going to be a peg here and a peg here. And they need to be exact, exactly the same distance from the center. So we're going to put this one in first. And the radius can be eighth of an inch. It's going to be a quarter inch, uh, quarter inch bit. Can be pretty close to the, the body. That's probably good. And then we're going to want to, let's see, there's a measure tool here. We're going to go from the center to this center, and that is what? 9.4596. So you want to write that down. Have a terrible memory, so I write everything down. So 9.4599. Okay. And then escape get rid, gets rid of that. Uh, select. Actually, we should probably put those on their own uh, layer too. And we'll call these pins. And then black's fine. That's fine. And then we'll click on it. Move it to. Whoops. Shoot. Right click, eh, there we go. Right click, move to layer pins. And then we will, uh, where's copy? Copy. Oops. And then paste, paste, there we go. Uh oh, oh, it pasted it over here. So if you drag it, I think you hold, no. Hold Shift or Alt. Alt keeps it in, in in line. So if you hold Alt while you're moving it, it'll stay centered. And you're going to push it out to probably right about there. And then we're going to measure nine, and we want what nine point. Oops, looks 
say we're nine five eight. And there, I'm sure there's a way to move this. You know, specifying size. Oh, there is right there. X position. Y position is the 19. X is X is this way. So, okay, we're going to do some math here. So we'll measure it again, find out what it is exactly. So it's 9.5816, and we will take 9.5816. 5816 minus 9.4599 and that leaves us with 0.1217 okay so then we want to select this go back to move click it once it brings this up take your 19.85816 and, my, and uh, subtract the 0.1217 that's what you want to enter into that box. So 19.5816 minus 0.1217. And it's all, uh, all this is going to vary on yours. So that brings you to 19.4599. That's pretty cool. So 4599. There it jumped. And if you want to verify that, it, that it's the proper distance from there go back to your measure tool make sure it kind of snaps you'll see it snap kind of in the middle uh, maybe it's not snapping on there and then bring it out to there nine four five nine nine okay so those are exactly the same distance from the center and they should be centered uh, up and down too but these are I believe That one's good. Yep, that one's good. Okay. So that's pretty important. Okay, now we're done with that file. And now we will move on to part two, which is setting our toolpaths. So we'll see you then. Thank you.